Yo, 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 what is up YouTube? And I'm excited for this video. I'm so freaking excited, man, because there's a new patch and there's a new item. And this item seems absolutely cracked. Can't wait to show you guys. I mean, you guys can see it in the thumbnail and whatnot, but uh, a lot of people don't read patch notes and whatnot, so you probably don't know, but Equinox. This item, and there's also Stormseeker too, but that's for hunters. And I think it sucks also and is bait. So like, we don't talk about that. Anyways, let me buy my stuff and get out of the base and then I'll talk more about it really really quickly um look at this actually do i want a horrific instead of a beads beads is like always the safe option versus anubis um another thing about this patch is they unbanned like a lot of gods like obviously they rebanned a bunch of gods as well <clears throat> notably my gilgamesh is now banned and i'm sad um but yeah a lot of gods are open you know like Hades, scotty on her uler ho Yi, holly bastet uh bologna like there's a lot of characters that are open right now. So it kind of seems more like the old school days. But um, anyways, as I was saying, Equinox, this character, or this item, hopefully we don't get ganked. This item is super, super cracked. It's like a, basically like I was just talking to Cosmos a second ago about it and he had a very good description, I would say, of the item, which is it's just a really good early game uh, bridge item. You know, it's just a really good early game rush, which obviously I knew, but he compared it to Griffin Wing, which I completely agree with, actually. Where is this Anubis, man? But the reason why he compared it to Griffin Wing is because it's just a super early game cheap power spike that you can get that feels good. And like, that's part of why uh, Hunters are so good in the early game. Or just good in general, honestly. It's because it's just a good class. Like, let's be real. Hunters are pretty much made for duel. Obviously, not really, but pretty much made for duel. And, um, but also they had just have a really good, really good, cheap, early power, sk power spike. Oop. I don't really want to fight into this full minion wave. But, uh, this item did replace a Golden Blade, by the way. In fact, I think it's the same price, because... Oh, I'm thinking about it. I think Golden Blade costed me 900 gold to get when I backed as well. So I think it's the same price. But um, here you can just read it really quickly. Essentially, it just gives you movement speed, power, attack speed. Um, most notably, like that's a lot of movement speed. Although Golden Blade gave that to you. So there's that. But um, anyways, it just basically gives you healing um, per level. So like it's weaker early game and gets stronger as the game goes on. But it gives you healing when you're auto attacking something that's looking at you. And it gives you extra damage when you're auto-attacking something that is not looking at you. Like, you're hitting it from the back, you know? Hit it from the back, baby. Um, so it's just a really strong trading item, because when you're fighting them, you're healing, you're healing, you're healing, and then they're like, oh no, this guy's healing too much, I gotta back off. And then you chase them, and you're doing more damage. Like, you just saw my extra damage right there. Here, I'll show it again. The 29? 29 extra damage? That's insane. Now, one thing I will say about it in Duel is you can't really get that extra damage on, like, the Bull Demon, unfortunately. I'm just gonna... Oh, I think, yep. Yeah. You cannot trade with me, bro. There's no way. I'll be honest, I haven't played Duel in a few days. And I've been kind of in Explano mode. So I wasn't really, like, focused that much on the game. So, like, from for a split second there, I was like, dude, this Anubis is gonna ult me and I'm gonna die. But then I... Then I, uh clicked back into reality and realized that it's an Anubis and all I have to do is destroy him to death. All I have to do is beat him down because I have beads, right? And I have my ult, which gives me 35% mitigations. Another reason why I picked Erlong to do this video, by the way, like there's a few reasons. I think Erlong is honestly like the best boxing warrior aside from Bologna, I guess. Because Bologna is kind of like an obvious one, right? But I don't like Bologna, so... And Erlong actually can compete with Bologna. Now, I'm not saying that he should win. I'm not saying Erlong should beat Bologna, but Erlong can compete with Bologna. He can trade with her. I promise you. Better than Osiris and Amaterasu and stuff like that. Um, he can trade with Bologna. But, so I chose him because I like him and because he's one of the best auto attack warriors. But also because of... Um, We're just destroying this guy. How much is my Equinox doing? 75. Oh, and I only hit him three times. Wow, that is incredibly OP. That is actually insane. Um, but another reason why I'm playing Erlong is because uh, someone requested it. They just, they asked. I don't know how many times they asked. It could have just been once for all I remember. But someone did, in fact, ask for it. 
All right, wing shard, wing shard. Oh, wait, I, did, I didn't pop my one. Bro, I actually took a chance at losing that because I didn't pop my one. Like, obviously I didn't lose it, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying that I did have a high chance, or not a high, but a higher chance of losing that because I didn't pop my one when I thought I did. The reason why the one matters is it's extra damage, of course, a little bit of extra lifesteal, but most importantly, it reduces their damage output. And reducing the enemy's damage output when they're Anubis and they're ulting is kind of a big deal. Oh, another notable thing about this patch, by the way, is um, it removed the scepter healing. This thingy right here that I have, it no longer heals towers, which is awesome. We love that. Looks like it still gives HP 5 when you're out of combat, but it doesn't heal towers. And let me test it and just make sure I wasn't lied to. Nope. I'm not healing the tower. That's what we like to see, baby. Like, don't get me wrong, I thought the healing of the towers was, like, a cool thing at first. Like, it was, like, interesting, I guess, because we've never really had anything like that in the game before, as far as I can remember, right? So, like, I thought it was pretty interesting, but it got old and stupid very quickly. I did not like that at all. It got old after maybe a few days. Because, to be honest, it wasn't even a good idea to begin with, obviously. I was just saying that it was interesting at first. It was interesting. But it got old. We're maxing our one over our ult because the ult pretty much just goes up by 50 healing. I'd much rather just have uh, points into my other abilities. I might max my ult over my pen. Um, I don't, there are quite a few people I know that don't max the ult at all. Like they'll max their pen first as well, but I don't know. I just prefer to have a decent chunky heal. I don't have a lot of respect for pen damage, even though it's not even that bad. Like it's really not that bad. It's just a high cooldown, you know, and I don't know. Long story short, for one reason or another, whether it's deserved or not, I just have no respect for pen damage. That's not how I play the character. So I will be putting points into my ult over the pen, more than likely. Um, what do we want here? Let's go Executioner. Let's go Executioner. We're probably going to need a Silver Branch in this build or something, or we're just going to end the game before overcapping even matters that much, to be honest. One of those things needs to happen. Uh, I was thinking about going Serrated, doubling down on my movement speed with my new newfound Golden Blade that's much better than Golden Blade. But, um, I don't know. I kind of want some anti-heal, and I chose not to go Pestilence, which is what I normally go against Anubis. Uh, I chose not to go Pesty, so I need some sort of anti-heal, and I'm not a big fan of Toxic Blade, and also that would give me the same attack speed problem anyways. So, what I'm opting to do here... Actually, let's just get this, because I think I'll be able to catch him every time. I don't think I need Blink to initiate on him. So what I'm opting to do is get Exy, so I can buy the green Exy Glyph uh, for anti-heal. Not the most immediate application of anti-heal, but it's not bad by any means. And it goes in with our auto-attack build, so... This build right here will actually do, these three items will do an immense amount of damage to things like Bull Demon and um, <clears throat> Titan. Do a ton of damage. There's no way he's going to die over a rock for the third time in a row, right? Alright, so Equinox did 167 there. Over the course of seven procs. Look at all those rocks there. Uh, I mean, I could go for the power but not that worried about it i'm trying to get like really beefy and be big so that way i can just get the tower and the phoenix in one go or the tower and the bull demon in one go i'm not really sweating anything else <laughs> yep he's probably gonna surrender i would surrender if i were in this predicament <laughs> how much did my equinox do there Oh, it's stacking from the last time I fought him, so it's not realistic. But it says it did 311 from the two fights combined, so... I guess we're gonna get this tower, because, I don't know, I don't have anything better to do. I already invaded this blue, which I'm pretty sure he got the blue, actually, but... So my game is so loud right now, I need to turn my headset down. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Also, Equinox is not the only thing I want to show off in this video. I have no idea what I'm going to do with the thumbnail or the title. I don't know if I'm going to put all this stuff in the thumbnail title or not. I have no idea, but... 
I also want to try out this frost bound. Yeah, that feels. Which is kind of counterintuitive because Anubis, usually they like to stand their ground and fight and not run away, but this Anubis in particular likes to run away a fair amount. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of killing him without the Frostbound. This is a, a unnecessary purchase. Very, very unnecessary in this partic particular situation. But I'm going to get it anyways because it sounds fun and I'm winning really hard anyways, so why not? Alright, we Frostbounded him, he's slowed. Frostbounded him, look at that, look at that uptime on the Frostbound. No! Keep running! I'm trying to look at the uptime. <laughs> look at that! I can just keep it on him. Okay, so anybody, for anybody that's confused as to what I'm doing, um, Frostbound got changed a long time ago to where it doesn't apply to every single auto attack anymore, but it has a cooldown, rather. Well, they just, they just buffed the cooldown of Frostbound, Making it um it's a it's a three second cooldown and a three second duration. So that means the same second it falls off, you can reapply it. So it's kinda like the old one, but not like the old one. I don't know how to you know. In a way it's almost better because it slows in an AoE and it also has an attack speed slow, which actually the old one might have had that as well, but anyways, the point is is you can just kinda keep that thing on him forever, which feels great. Let's just go crit. Why not? Out of my path. Out of my path. I'm surprised this guy hasn't surrendered, dude. Not gonna lie. I, I did not expect this to be a full game at all. Let's get this rock. Young Rocky. No, he's getting his blue. <clears throat> I don't really care about him getting the blue. I just kind of want to use my Frostbound on this guy. One more time. When he's full HP, I want to do it. Unless he's killing me. If he's killing me, that's different. Wait, actually, let me clear this wave. He's Frostbounded. Look. Oh wait, doesn't Frostbound remove shields too, or is it just Jim? That might just be Jim. Alright, we got a Chester for our great escape if we need to. No, I wanted to see how much- I knew the thorns wouldn't kill him, because he'd be in Fountain. I just wanted to see how much damage it would do to him. Frostbound. Frostbound. <laughs> I don't know why. I find that so funny. Also, my scepter's done like 500 damage. Holy crap. Alright, I'll stop trolling with the Frostbound. We get it. Obviously, I can Frostbound the guy. I will play the game seriously now. I will go back and get myself... Bladed Boomerang. And I'll give myself a power potion. Or actually, it's potion of power, isn't it? Potion of power. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll kill him and end this game. And skip you guys into a hopefully more competitive matchup. Not so competitive that I lose, though, smile. That would be sad. Because there are a lot of OP characters up right now. But Erlon can fight a lot of them, I will say that. There's just a few. A few that, like, yeah, are just definitely have to ban that. Yep. <clears throat> close fight, close fight, close fight, close fight. I mean, I did have a red pot. So there's that. I'm not even gonna get the minions. I don't think I need them. Oh, what the? I canceled that. Why did it? I had that, that bug happen a lot, actually. Dude, I could, I could just kill the Titan for free. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even paying attention to how much my Equinox was healing me for. Does it say? Let's see, it was immune to a spell. Oh, wait. Oh, it's bugging out because... Dang it, dude. Okay, I'm going to actually, like, I'm going to skip you guys into the next game, of course, as per usual. And in between that time, I'm going to look at this recording, and uh, I'm going to see how much I was healing there, so I can tell you guys after, and we can talk about it a little bit, because that seemed kind of OP.
GG, Mr. Guy. Hopefully, I'm going to re because you guys say that you don't mind seeing the same person, but I'm still going to say it. I hope I don't go against this guy again. Or if I do, hopefully he's just playing a more competitive character. Anubis is... He's good, but he's mostly just good into certain matchups slash good versus bad players. Let's be real. So I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're on to the next game. Oh, and by the way, just like random thought that I why am I against a million star Loki? <laughs> a million star Loki, man. Why are there so many of these? Um, random thought I just had, which was, oh, yeah, you can look at the bands that like, you know, the player bands on each side, the six bands we do at the start of the lobby or whatever. Um, you can look at those and that'll give you like a sneak peek into some of the gods that are uh, available now. By the way, just random thought that I had. And you can see that I'm banning Hades. Hades is back for the first time in like months and months and months. Definitely gonna be a video on that soon. Um, What do we want to do against a Locky? I wanna go Horrific, but Horrific's not really great against him. Um, Late game is the thing. I would rather have like blink beads or something of that nature. But the horrific it does make it to where you just like kind of can't fight me early game at all. Which he really shouldn't be able to fight me regardless. But this makes it to where he definitely can't. Do I want to start my one? I mean, I think starting the one actually is Erlong's best option. Like it's a very strong ability even for one point. But I just love bursting with the three for whatever reason. I'll probably start the one though because I know it's correct. It's got to be correct. We saved it for the big auto there. We're going to pop both of our potions because why the heck and not. Wait, he has Sunder? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> You're telling me this guy bought Sunder? Alright, so not really too much to explain there. Like, my thought process, I mean. Uh, that was just a simple situation of... It's a Loki, and I'm a uh, Erlong with a red. I have a red buff. I'm a stronger character, and I just assumed I'd have better relics than him because I don't know. Look, most Lokis just don't go horrific. Maybe they do. I don't know. But even if they did, he's not gonna have like a. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say even if he did have a horrific, he's not gonna have a wing shard. But he does have a wing shard. But one thing I will say about that is Loki doesn't get as much value as the wing shard as Erlong does. So call it a day there. Point is, is he's a, just a weaker character at that stage of the game, and I have a red buff. Granted, he did have minion wave pressure, but I have red buff and whatnot, so I can just fight him for free. And now we have Equinox, so there's literally not a question in my existence that we can do whatever we want here. I'm gonna pop my potions, so if he goes on me. Oh my god, dude, I barely hit him with the Equinox and it did 85 damage. It's four procs. And again, it scales it scales more as the game goes on. Like it does more damage later on. Which obviously your defense and HP scale as well, but I didn't pop my wing shard there, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think having it for like this next fight or some something is really good. If he wants to force a fight on me, we can do it. <laughs> These guys are not ready for the Erlong Chin meta, baby. I'm just kidding. Honestly, it's not like an Erlong specific item. It's just like any auto attack warrior or even ability based warriors can pick it up and it'd probably still be fine. Um, but it does like it just feels really good on Erlong, especially and probably Bologna because they're just such dominant boxers, man. Like they actually just destroy everything else. Like it's not even close. Osiris is going to feel great on too. Ama is going to feel great on, of course, but again, Erlang is just already such a top boxer that it's just so impossible. And I really do think, like, he has, just has such good trading tools, man. Like, the mink gives attack speed, the one reduces uh, reduces damage and gives you, uh, and his lifesteal, plus just does damage. Your ult gives you 35% mitigations and a big heal. 35% uh, mitigations for... For, uh, four seconds like that's broken like this actually feels unstoppable i feel super super powerful 
Now, of course, if I was against like a top tier ADC, like, I don't know, Cooler or something, I'd probably feel way worse. Against like a top eight auto attack ADC, though, like on her or something, I don't think it would be that terrible. In fact, I might even leave on her open in this video. I'm not sure. The problem with that, though, is like, it would it's not just on her, like, it would have to be a good on her player to like come close to beating me as Erlong. Like, I promise you, the average on her is not winning that. The average on her. I don't even know why I'm going defense second, to be honest, against the Loki. I guess I just want to feel like OP and like I can't be stopped. And defense second is pretty normal in Warriors. Oh, yes. This does also just give a million HP 5, which always feels great. And it makes me feel more unstoppable. It allows me to dive the tower too, that's something I should know. I don't I don't really have any plans on diving the tower, like that's not like what I want to do, but he just juke me that hard. Oh my goodness, dude. This might be the best Loki player I've ever seen. Just kidding. Just kidding, all Loki players suck. Everybody knows that. Right, guys? This whole running out of mana thing is not cool, though. Probably down there, I would assume. Oh! <laughs> this is what I was saying. He's up here by his tower. Just as I thought. I might have to buy a mana pot or two, to be honest. Like, I don't have to, but I think I want to. Just to sustain longer. And be able to chase this guy around the map a little bit. Okay, cringe lord. Yeah, that's gonna help a lot. Seriously, that's gonna help a lot. I think I am just gonna go this one this time. And I'm going to... Yeah, I'm gonna buy one mana potion. Why not? One mana pot. It's like actually kind of a big deal. Like, 150 mana out of 650 total. It's pretty good. Uh, I'm not going X this time because I don't really think I need anti heal. Because the serrated just found sounds better anyways in my head because it gives me movement speed. I could go frostbound into this guy, but I don't know. Just another just another matchup where frostbound's like not really that amazing. Frostbound's like a 50-50 thing. Like not all it's not like something you should be building in every matchup, but it is strong enough now to where you probably could build it in every matchup if you wanted to. Uh, I shouldn't have popped all, all of my stuff there, to be honest, but... I think he might try to go for the red if I go to this blue. I love how he's trying to, like, poke me and stuff, and, like, I respect it, you know what I mean? He's trying to get a little bit active. But between the fact that we both have defense, and, like, I have so much HP 5 and whatnot, and I'm ahead, like, he's not actually doing anything to me, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm not getting poked out at all. Like, actually not doing anything to me. Oh, and Serrated's gonna give me lifesteal, too. On top of my one lifesteal, and on top of my healing for my Equinox. I'm actually gonna have insane healing, dude. Holy. Alright, we're gonna back. Buy a Power Potion. Buy Serrated. We're gonna go... Beads. Yeah. Call it a day. I could get some wards too, but I'm not really that worried about it. Who can play at this game? Oh, I see what you did there. Okay, you got the Chesters and whatnot. I should be looking for pins on him before he stealths more often. I got the beads for his ult. If he... I think the only way he can steal this, I think... Is if he... Oh, I got some Equinox damage. Is if he ults it or something. And if he ults it... 
he's in, right? Yep, this is exactly how I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> so, uh, I bought beads, uh, because I didn't want him to, uh, his, his, the start of his ult, like, it's not even about the stun, it's about the start of his ult being a cripple, right? And so since the start of his ult's a cripple, I wouldn't be able to mink it, but the start of his ult also doesn't do very much damage, so I thought I could 100% out-secure him if I beads the cripple and then mink it, which I did, and then he ults, his ult is down and he's in there with me, his only choice is to invis and stealth away, and I can taunt him out of it and then he's dead, right? Yep, I'm an Erlong with the Red Pot, Equinox, baby, Bull Demon. I was about to pick up that Dual Orb. We were about to get that Phoenix at 9 minutes, and he was not even going to be able to clear a minion wave. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feels good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm just going to admit it right now. Let's be real. This item is OP. Should probably be nerfed. Yeah, should probably be nerfed. I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions too quickly. Maybe I'm an idiot, and this item sucks. But, like, there's a 99% chance. This item is OP, man. It's just so good. It's so beautiful. I'll go ahead and skip you guys into another matchup. Hopefully a, a more competitive matchup. Hopefully a more entertaining matchup. But this is dual at the end of the day. Game mode sucks. What can I say to you? I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next one. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys. We are off into the third game. Finally. Okay, I'm going to get a different guy. So you guys are probably wondering, what do I mean? Finally. Um, or maybe you weren't. Yeah, I'm going to tell you either way. Um, I went against that same Loki from the last game that you guys watched. I went against that guy again as Nemesis versus Loki. He banned Erlong after that game. So I beat him in like 11 minutes or something with Nemesis. Maybe like 13 minutes. Yeah, it was like 13 minutes with Nemesis versus his Loki. And then I was like, dude, I don't want to go against him again because I don't want him to ban Erlong again. So I skipped a queue, waited four minutes of my time. Eight minutes in total, but four minutes because of him. And then I skipped the queue and went against the guy again. So he either got prior queued, like when you know, you know, when there's no one in the queue, like you don't get a match, uh, or he skipped a queue too. So the point is, is I went against him as Nim because he banned Erlong. I skipped a queue, went against him again, and he banned Nemesis in Erlong. So I I beat him with Osiris. This time he picked Vamana, not Loki. But yeah, anyways, it's been like 30 minutes since I last recorded Erlong because I kept going against the same guy. I'm not even going to lie to you guys, I even considered going to West Coast. Like, I actually, I, I definitely considered going to West Coast. I was getting frustrated. But, um, I, I almost thought I was against him again, to be honest, this game. But, thankfully we are not. Um, thankfully we are not. I skipped two queues. I waited like 12 minutes to get into a game. This time, so, that's good. By the way, like, I know I've said it a couple times, but I don't always, like, it very well um that's one of the reasons why i skip cues by the way because you guys say like i've asked you guys if you guys care if i go against the same guy over and over or not and you guys say as long as they're not bad it's fine to go against the same guy over and over but the, another reason why i don't like to go against the same guy over and over is because they might ban the character i'm playing right so that's a part of it Certainly a part of it, especially if that god's like a top tier character, or maybe not necessarily a top tier, it's just, you know, really good, right? Like, Erlong's not necessarily a top tier, although I think he deserves to be, it's just still, most people don't really consider Erlong to be a top tier character, but he is very good. Very, very good indeed. Alright, so we got our Equinox, let's go. We love Equinox. This matchup should be pretty easy for us overall. He does have a sprint, which is actually very smart on his part. A lot of people would go like... I don't even know. Shell. The shell are horrific or something. But Sprint's pretty smart for him. Just to kite me in general. But also because I kind of started. I started horrific, right? So. Definitely an interesting situation to say the least. We're going to back sell all our pots for the chalice. Do not be afraid of selling your potions, guys. I would rather waste, like, what is it? Like 13 or 17 gold on each pot. I don't remember. Uh, you guys can check. I would rather waste that little bit of gold and be ready for the early game than, uh, than, than not be ready for the early game. Like, I would rather buy the potions and not use them than not, right? And you would say, why not just use them? Well, because the gold you get back from selling them is actually worth it. Like, I just got, like, 90-something gold back for doing it, so... It's worth it to buy them, and it's worth it to sell them. It's worth it to use them, you know? Do whatever you... 
do whatever you think is best in the situation at the end of the day. Let's just try to force a fight here, see what happens. Alright, so he didn't use his sprint or his horrific. And I don't know what to say about that one. That's just a dual player moment. Like I was trying to I was trying my best to like wait out and see what he was gonna do. Cause I figured he would ult at one point or another. I didn't immediately horrific because I thought he would sprint. I horrific near the end because I thought it kinda like didn't matter at that point. Like I feel like he was either gonna die or get his ult off regardless of the sprint. So I just thought it was a pretty good time to horrific him. Near the end of the fight, I was kind of just waiting to see what he was going to do, and he ended up doing nothing. So, now one thing to note from that is there's no Chester, so I didn't get that Chester pressure, which sucks. Chesters are spawning here and here. Um, but one thing to note is I did just use my relic, my shard, and my um my ult there, and he did not use anything. So, technically, this next fight I should uh, probably be a little bit wary of, I guess, but I think we'll be okay overall uh i'm just gonna rush damage second because i don't think this chronos is gonna put enough pressure on me that i need shogun second but shogun second would be fine it would give me some mana sustain which is really nice but i'm gonna be a little bit greedy here and just rush some movement speed you know movement speed is a defensive stat at the end of the day as well so assuming i use it correctly and juke a little bit should be okay all right we avoided his stun there not really because of my movement speed like i was saying but kind of just Got baited. I canceled that bad boy and moved off to the side. Is he going to come over here and contest this? It does not appear like he's going to. Let's go get our Chester here. Bring him to lane, because why not? We'll take him down with the Scepter a bit. I might, I'm probably going to outrun him, though, because I'm a relatively fast character. And because I have movement speed items, so. Got to keep that in mind, indeed. Oh, we hit him with the damage there, which is great. The pen is actually amazing in this matchup. We love that. If he ults, he'll go back to the middle of the lanes. I think he's aware of that. Okay, now, at this point, he's going to go back, right? Because he waited. But if he ulted when I was actually on him, dealing a lot of damage earlier, he would have went back to the middle of the lane. All right, we're going to three, because even if we get hit by his one, which we didn't, or his stun, I should say, um, his, th his three... Uh, even if we got hit by that, he doesn't have enough damage, just in general, but especially since he just used this one. Relatively low cooldown, but he still wouldn't have had it up immediately for the uh, stun. And my back and audio animation went off, but we didn't actually back because he paused the game, interestingly enough. Uh, is there anything I can yap about during this um, so I don't have to cut out the pause? Okay, so we're going to get our serrated edge second, and we're going to start tier one shoguns. Probably not going to buy a power potion until after the shoguns. I already kind of have that planned out. Uh, as far as second relic goes, we're probably going to go beads. Beads for the stuns, of course. We might even get a magi's late game, to be honest, because Kronos' big thing is obviously movement speed and his ult. But the thing about his ult is it resets his cooldown. So that means he can stun you, ult, and then have another stun up, right? All right, we successfully yapped, and I stopped my back. Um, so I'm going to probably beads one stun and, and magize the other. I'm not sure. It depends. We'll see. Matt. Oh, actually, I don't want this yet. Like I was just saying, um, magis isn't always needed. And magize is more of like a, when you're in like a good, like a big boy game, that's like competitive. And so we'll see like what this guy does until then. Right. Let's see. Cause if he's just dying to me, I'll cool down then probably don't need the magize. I would really prefer him not to get this meteor. So he used the stun already. He's trying to juke me. Unsuccessfully. I missed my pin, though. He did, in fact, juke that. His ult should be up by now, I would, I would imagine, no? I guess not. I mean, I think he did ult before he got CDR. And I know Kronos ult is one of those ults that scales down throughout the game. So, like, it starts at a high cooldown, and as you level it, goes down. I still kind of thought you would have his ult by then, though. But maybe that pause just threw, threw me off. Either way, gonna go get this red buff, call it a day. I would much rather have blink beads, honestly, now that I know he has sprint. That's why I said the sprint was so smart. Blink would be so much better for me than horrific here, but... 
it is what it is. We don't need the blink to win this. It's just, it would just make it easier, you know? Well, his name looks so familiar, but I don't know what from. Like, I don't know if I've seen him in my streams, if I've played against him before. I don't know. But his name does look very familiar to me. I gotta go get this little rock. Be right back. Woo! Actually, I want to stay because this rock spawning. He most squirtingly did not need to ult. I think he did that out of either panic or he either panicked or he or he just wanted to heal himself. So I don't know why it took me so long to figure out what I was trying to say there. You know what? Let's just max our pin this game instead of the ult. See if that damage really adds up and if it really matters that much. But it's like he, it's almost like he ulted just to be healthy. He wanted to have more HP to contest something, but like he didn't contest anything, so very interesting. One thing I will note, because I kind of like stopped talking about Equinox, right? But because it's really not like I don't want to say it's not a crazy item, because it is a crazy item, but it's more of like it's not something I have to explain or talk about 24-7. It's just it's a sustain item. And then when they're running away, it does extra damage. Like that's it. It's literally just a movement speed sustain item that does extra damage. I'm actually gonna upgrade this. I'm going to upgrade this, um, beads. I don't know why I'm so, like, out of it. I can't find the words I'm looking for sometimes. I got so freaking bored playing against that guy. I'm playing against Loki. That my brain just shut off, man. But anyways. All right, he has a poly. He still has no pen or anything, so he's not that intimidating. I upgraded my beads to get it off cooldown faster, of course. But also because, technically, like, you know, we can start the second quest real quick. And the second quest is about dealing instances of damages, and hopefully we can uh, get the the third upgrade, or well, the second upgrade, I guess, for free. Now, although I don't really have any dot damage or anything that does like consistent damage, so it's gonna be hard to stack it. But either way, the, just the cooldown is worth it, I think. No way I didn't pick this up, bro. Dang it! All uh, right, this is a bit risky, I'll be honest, because. Like, if I went there immediately, like, if I picked up that rock immediately, maybe this would be fine, but this is a little bit risky. He does have... Okay, he's not here. It is still slightly risky, though, in the sense of I'm letting a Kronos go on my tower, right? And a poly Kronos at that, so... We're gonna go ahead and mink in, see what we can do. And I missed my ult, apparently. Going back into the tower. Let's go. I'm gonna horrific him now, and if he sprints it, I'll have pen. Okay, never mind. He's just dead. All right. So, like I said, I mean, it kind of went down exactly the way I thought it would. To be honest, uh, I didn't lose my tower, but I kind of knew that I was gonna get my tower owned. But I'll be honest with you guys. Typically, when you have pressure, it's typically not worth trading towers. Or, yeah, yeah, because when you have pressure, it's not worth trading towers, like giving him my tower for getting his tower. Uh, just because you don't need to, you know, you can slow play it a little bit, and like you don't have, you can win the game without giving them anything. You don't have to sacrifice anything, right? But in this particular instance, I think it's more than fine overall. It is more than fine because I have no, pr I, I do not fear this guy at all. I don't... Yep. That's a... an Erlong moment for you right there. Can we get this Phoenix? Maybe if I use the door, but at the same time, probably not. Oh, he is still dead for nine seconds. I don't know. Alright, let's prime up a, a big, juicy AoE auto here. Get in. I don't know why I pressed my one. I don't think that even affects the, the thing. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Either way. We got the Phoenix. Wait, you, waiting to use our pin when he's like movement speeding away. And he's dead. And he's dead. That's another That's another tip. By the way, our Equinox did uh, 331 damage and 9 auto attacks, by the way. Very <laughs> OP. 
Um, like, like things like Kins and stuff like that do more damage than Equinox, of course. But, like, that's also later in the game, and it's a more expensive item, right? So, uh, Equinox being, like, an early game item is so nice. It feels so nice. GG. And that's another just pro tip in general against Kronos. It's not really, like, that deep. But, like, saving your damage for when he's low is really big. Like, uh, when he's sub half HP and I put my pen and then minked him, he didn't expect to get bursted down that fast and he's just dead, right? But, like, this is absolutely insane, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just running it down at people. Literally just running it down. I think I'm going to get you guys at least one more, if not two more, or long games. I'm running out of skins to use for you guys. But, but yeah, I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're off into the fourth game. And, yep, that's what I figured. Uh, I, I recognized his bands. What do you know, guys? We got one game away from this guy, and we're against him again. This, for those who weren't paying attention or didn't care enough, uh, is the Loki I went against earlier. And the same guy that I told you I was trying to avoid and had to play multiple games against off recording because he was banning Erlong. Um, he did not ban Erlong this time, thankfully, which is awesome. We appreciate that. He did ban Nemesis, though, which is another character that he wasn't banning initially, but he started banning because I beat him with it. So it like scared me a little bit that he banned Nemesis. I was like, oh, he's going to ban the Erlong too. But I guess he forgot slash. Yeah, he probably just forgot, but he might also have been thinking it wasn't me. I mean, I did kind of like the similar bands, same bands I do every game, give or take, maybe like one band, but he's laughing. Oh, I don't blame him for laughing though. When I was against him, um, when I was against him, uh, the two games that you guys didn't see, I was laughing the whole time. I was laughing the whole time because he banned my Erlong and also because the when he played Vamana the, the first time, he did that thing where you just hide around the corner. You just you just hide around the corner and wait for them to start the red and then come around and try to steal it. He did that. So, yeah. Believe me, pal. I was laughing at this dude that whole game. I don't think he's going to box me. I truly don't believe he's going to box me. So, I'm not going to get my one. I'm just going to get... Two points in my three for better clear. The one is amazing for the level three fight, but I don't think he will. And maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll see. Yeah, that's kind of about how I assumed it would go. <laughs> so getting my one would have been not like useless because it's still decent for clear. Because like, you know, the one applies on auto attacks and Erlang does have at least like one auto, uh, one AOE auto attack, but still... I'd rather just have the double point into my three because it makes me use less mana. The main thing for me. Oh yeah, that's what I was trying to avoid. I was trying to avoid him hitting me with his two and the minions, you know, double and doubling down, hitting me with the clear as well, right? So we kind of screwed up our wave clear a little bit on this wave, but not really that deep either way. He's just running out of mana more than I am because he has to use more abilities on it. Remember how I said not getting the point in the one will help our mana sustain a lot? Well, that's kind of what I meant. I do think Erlang just uses less mana slash has, has more mana in his kit than Vomana does. Uh, I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure. But us not spamming three abilities on the wave certainly helps. That's without a doubt. Be right back. We're going to back. He might get the rock here, which honestly sucks. I'd rather him not get the rock. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. We pushed some minions under tower, and we got the red buff pressure. So pulling it. Pulling it. No problem. Pulling it a W is what I was trying to say there. I think he is on his blue buff now, because he probably went straight to the meteor. Oh, if I threw my pin immediately, I could have got that. Unlucky. Yep, just run away as per usual. I don't blame him, honestly, because this is not a matchup that he's favored in, like, uh, boxing-wise. Remember how I said Erlung is, like, the best boxer? He can even compete with uh, Bologna a little bit. He's not really the best boxer. I mean, I think Bologna is better. But he's not far away from her, to be honest. Like, he's really not, Sam. I think he's the second best boxer, but he's very close. 
these things spawn at three minutes. So we're going to grab this up real quick. One thing I didn't mention about Equinox earlier, like I told you guys that it does more damage from behind, right? So that means like technically a way to clear the wave faster would be to get behind the minions. I don't, I haven't done that much this, um, this game because I don't really care. But like, for example, you can go behind them and do extra damage, right? I just haven't really cared that much to do it, I guess, but I thought I would mention it. A little bit of a pro tip to clearing faster. Of course, the minions will be looking at you normally, but... Yeah. They will be looking at you normally, but uh, if there's other minions there or they're on the tower, you can get behind them, right? It's not such a big DPS increase that, like, you, like, have to do it right, but worth, worth mentioning. Gonna knock me up. Is water wet? <laughs> what does that mean? We're just gonna back here, man. Why not reset? Get a little bit of our HP and stuff back. Oh yeah, I don't think I ever got that Chester right there. Did I get that? I don't even remember if I did or didn't, to be honest. Oh, I thought he just started his backing animation. Oh, that's a big blunder on my part. I should have stopped him there. I thought he, like, just started it. Oops. Not trying to use any mana slash abilities on this wave because I don't need to. Is if if he has this item finished, I don't think I can fight him actually. He does have it finished. Dang, that sucks. Doesn't mean we can't out secure him on a buff or, or something though. I'm going XE second because I do want an XE versus Vamana. I want the green XE for his shielding. And I just didn't feel like going defense second, to be honest with you, but. All right, we can definitely fight him now. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we might have been able to fight him regardless, to be honest, because our character is just so much better at boxing. But we can definitely fight him now that so we have the red buff. We're just now popping our potions. We got plenty of sustain coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I popped my thingy right as he left. All right, we popped a mana pot. He's going to assume we're Oom, um, which we kind of are, but only kind of. I find this to be quite funny because uh, you can't out secure me if you're ulting. I understand why he ulted, but just so you know, that is a blunder, my friend. I'm gonna go ahead and get this rock. Le Roca. But yeah, I, I probably should have went defense second, to be honest. I probably should have went berserker second because even just the HP5 alone is really strong. But uh, I don't think going XE second is really the worst thing in the world. It's not. Now, with that being said, I have enough gold to buy a full Berserker shield. So I'm just going to do it, man. It probably is proper. But I'm uh, definitely going to get this XE online as soon as possible. Just for good auto attack damage in general. But also because we want that green XE, right? It might be on the bull demon. I kind of doubt it. Oh. All right. <laughs> Hit him with the singular laugh. Oh god, I, I love when people do that, man. All PvP or all PVE players are the same. Maybe I should just say all all dual players are the same, man. I'm losing the game. Straight to Bull Demon. I do remember that we left two one HP Chesters over there. Now some people might be wondering why I didn't uh, why I didn't kill that. I think I just win this now. He has the same, same amount of build as I do. Okay, he hit that. The problem is, it's like I'm just oom, you know? I don't have enough mana for my three yet. I did get the, uh... I apparently got the, uh... Oh. Be right 
it's back. Got the tower, is what I was trying to say. Yeah, you can just have the red buff, man. You earned it. Let's be real. You earned it. Um, I don't know if the green XC is really worth buying, like, immediately, but... We're getting it. I don't know what second relic I want just yet. Sometimes I go beads versus a mana because it helps you, like, you beads the knock up and then chase him kind of thing. But you also have to predict when he's going to knock up, so it's a little bit weird. I could just go blink and blink after him after he ults. Or after he dashes away, I could just blink on him. Could also just go thorns for the boxing potential, right? Like, I have quite a few options here, but... We shall see. Alright, he's half HP already, apparently. Gonna go ahead and start up this buff. I mean, I do have a power pot, so... Me being, like, substantially stronger than him kind of makes sense. I mean, like, my character's just also better. But, yeah. Oh, my God. He actually doubled down and got an Aussie. The reason why that's doubling down is because my green Xe actually has anti-heal on it, right? So, not only did he not get pinned, but he desperately needs to be able to kill me or do anything, for that matter. He didn't get pinned, but he chose to get lifesteal. Which I have anti-heal for. Now, it's not going to anti-heal all of it, but... Yeah. He's really relying on, like, ulting and life-stealing in his ult or something of that nature. Because... Oh, here we are. Oh, something I was going to mention earlier, by the way. The reason why I didn't kill those Chesters is because some people would say, Why didn't you kill them for the movement speed boost? Well, it's kind of awkward, to be honest, to kill them, like, on the way, I guess. I'm just going to get the blink and a mana pot. It's kind of awkward to kill those guys while you're chasing because while it seems good because you get the movement speed boost, you actually don't get the movement speed boost immediately. You have to kill it and then once the thing drops on the ground, maybe I can demonstrate it later with a future Chester if the game's still going, you don't get the movement speed boost immediately. So you have to kill it. Like, let's pretend I'm killing it, right? You kill, the, kill it, it drops, you wait, then you can get it. Like, you have to pause and wait on it. You don't just kill it. It doesn't give you it immediately. It's like it takes a second to actually proc on your character. So, and is it worth it? That one second you have to wait to get the movement speed? Is it worth it? Maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying it's not as worth it as people think. Because you can... I think a lot of people think you can just kill it. Okay, I got the movement speed immediately. Like, it actually takes a second to give you that movement speed. So... I could knock up Amina's knock up with my dash. Okay... I have green XC and horrific on him, so he's not getting any shielding whatsoever. You aren't even a worthy opponent for my loyal dog. The human mind. <laughs> Is that toxic? Is that a toxic thing to do? Maybe it was. I don't know. Is water wet? I don't know why that just like cracks me up every time. Not even like the question of is water wet. I know where that like came from. That was like a big topic like a few years back or whatever. It's just the way he says it, bro. Is water wet? <laughs> cracks me up. I could have went straight to Bull Demon. Let's be real. Maybe even went straight to the Phoenix. But I'm pretty confident that if I just get that, get that farm, get the red buff. Um, get the rock, all that stuff. I can just win the game regardless, right? I don't need to get the Phoenix right this moment. I think he's on the uh, blue buff. And I chose to go pick up a rock instead of contesting that, which is pretty bad. But, oh well. Let's see what happens here. Even if he steals this buff, like, don't get me wrong. I would hate it if he stole it. But it's really not the end of the world. Like, it's really not. I mean, I kind of made a mistake doing that because my Minx actually had a long cooldown and I kind of needed to secure the buff, I fear. Your shortcomings are apparent. Your shortcomings are apparent. I want to use my red pot slash red buff. Uh, maybe I am just going to 50-50 this buff or something. Uh, he, we cleared and he was a bit greedy. 
he wanted to clear as well, so I do believe we just get this. Right, he's getting the rock in response. Interesting. Le Roca. Alright, we're gonna get a proximity ward. We don't have a mana pot, but we do have the bull demon for a bit, which is definitely going to be useful for sure. Dude, I wonder if we should just pick up a blue buff, not gonna lie. Like, is that crazy? Is it crazy just to go pick up this blue buff for our mana thing? Because it's so awful. We got it. We got the blue buff. Blue buff plus bull demon, huh? Surely we don't go oom um now. Now, I would love... I would love nothing more than to have my boomerang right now, but it is what it is. Yep, uh, like, Vamana just doesn't do anything in this meta, in my opinion. Like, don't get me wrong, he still can be kind of strong with his, like, normal kit, but his, like, if you go crit and you knock somebody up and you start beating them when they're in the air, you can do a lot of damage, but his ult just feels so useless because it's been nerfed so many times now. And also, you just go green Xy and horrific and just destroy him. Like, even just horrific alone is pretty it's pretty solid into it, to be honest. So, very interesting. Say GG to the lad here. I'll tell you guys my full build here. Um, now, I didn't end up going Frostbound any more than the first game. So, <laughs> that's probably not going to be in the title or thumbnail. But, Frostbound's definitely a viable option you can throw into your build if you want, for funsies. But, like, and you guys also saw... A lot of the um, items that I was building already, you guys, I got to late game in a few of these games, right? Actually, I mean, I don't know if it's late, late, but I got to like at least five items in a couple of them. But I'm just going to tell you guys, and of course, it always changes. Like what you build changes, but I'm going to tell you guys a pretty consistent build. Honestly, the normal build that I usually go, I'd say the main difference is just uh, I'm going Equinox over like Transcendence or Dominance, right? Uh, on like more ability based warriors like uh, Gilgamesh, for example, I'd probably still go. I'd probably still go Transcendence because I just love, 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 love the mana. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, Shoguns. Uh, honorable mention, you can go uh, Pestilence also. Or, whoops. Honorable mention, you can also go Pestilence here. Would be fine. And honorable mention, Magi's. This is not for magical characters. This is just, in general, something you can build as a last item. Pretty good. So, again, if you're against a magical, Shoguns. Um, so yeah, here I'd say this is like where it's like honestly the biggest difference is you can go Xe or you can go Serrated or you can go Boomerang. All three are good. All three are strong. It's entirely up to you what you want to do. Um, in my opinion, if you desperately need anti-heal or anti-shield, it's an obvious executioner angle. Um, if you do not need it, then it's going to be a Serrated angle. Serrated is just a very strong item. Overall, really good. You even could get these items together. I've done that sometimes, usually later though. Like sometimes I'll get serrated early and then I'll get green XC last item. That's definitely viable as well, right? I know I'm giving you guys a lot of options, but the truth is there are a lot of options, right? I do think boomerang is good enough to be in most, if not all builds. And I'm just gonna throw an honorable mention oboe here. I'll explain that a little bit more in just a moment. But I'd say if you're against like a warrior, Oh, and uh, here's a Kins. Like, this is going to be a bit of a hard one to explain. You guys are going to have to follow along with what I'm saying here, less about the visuals. Um, so if you're against a warrior like I was, I would go Xe into Kins, and then I'd probably start doing the boomerang, and then I would probably go Serrated last, or I'd go Oboe. Oboe is for the Titan. It's for killing the Titan. That's what we love this item for at the end of the day. But again, this would probably be my build if I was just truly trying to fight a uh, auto attack warrior. Or not even auto, just a beefy character would probably be this build, right? If I'm not against the beefy character and I don't need anti-heal that bad, or like say I do need anti-heal, so I go the green XC, but I'm not really against the beefy character. I'm just I'm against an Anubis, right? So I'm gonna get bladed boomerang right there, call it a day. And then after that point, you can get your serrated. You can get I mean honestly, let me look at these items really quickly. You don't really go Kins unless you're against a tanky character. You could go Aussie. Not really that great though, in my opinion. Um, here, I'd say, honestly, if you're against like a magical character and, uh, and you're in this point of your build, I mean, Serrated is just so good. You probably should just get a Serrated. And then last item, that's when you can get your Magi's to immune the Anubis wrap or whatever. You can get your Oboe to kill the Titan. You can double down on crit if you really wanted to and get a Deathbringer or a Demon Blade, although I don't think that's that great. You can get the newly buffed Arendite. 
uh, which allows you to chase very, very well. Another movement speed item as well. It's gonna, you're going to have three movement speed items if you get that very strong. Uh, you can even go Hasten Katana. Hasten Katana is a pretty good Erlong Shin item, I think, depending on the matchup, especially if you're just chasing them around the entire time. If they're not boxing you, you're just chasing them around. Hasten Katana, definitely valuable, allows you to get more Equinox procs off as well because they're running away from you and you're hastening uh, from behind them, right? So very strong. Um, it honestly doesn't even matter what you build. Last item, this core is so good if you're against like a mage. Um, so what other option would there be? So if you're... If you if you don't need anti heal whatsoever, the next build. If you don't need anti heal whatsoever, you probably go boomerang into serrated, or you go serrated into boomerang. Either one works. And so now we have no exe because we don't need the anti heal. Although I will say you can get executioner even if you don't need anti heal. Uh, honorable mention, um, glyph red exe is a very strong glyph as well. So honestly. I'm just not a big XE fan, so like I kind of don't want to put it in the build. Like I really don't, but it's a strong item. Like that glyph is very, very, very strong. So it probably should just be in all of your builds. The only difference is if you don't need anti heal early and mid, and you're not against a beefy target, you probably get the XE later on in your build. That's the main difference. You probably get it fifth or sixth item, right? So you get the XE here, whatever. And then again, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can go double. Okay guys, sorry I'm back. I had to cut the video and I haven't done like I haven't actually done that cut yet. So I don't know if it was like a jarring cut, like if I was in the middle of a sentence or not. But regardless of how I cut the video, I got a phone call, so I do apologize. I had to uh it interrupted me mid sentence and I had to pick it up. It was a phone call that I was waiting on. I just thought it would be later. Um so anyways, I don't know what I was talking about <laughs> two seconds ago, but uh I know I was at the end of this build here, right? At the end of the day, uh at the end. At the end of the day, the last item you build here can be a utility item. Uh, like, assuming that they're not, like, super, super beefy and you don't need the kins. You can go the kins against squishy characters. It would be fine. It's not horrible. But last item, I'd probably usually like to get an oboe to end the game. Or I would like to just get more damage, like, like a bigger burst damage, like Deathbringer. Or even double defense or something of that nature, right? Or a utility item. It's the most likely one, honestly. The most likely one would be a utility item like your Winged Blades for the slows, your Magi's Revenge for the hard CCs, your Hasten Katana to chase, your Arendite to chase, or Reveal Stealth, depending on the matchup, right? Um, so yeah, the last item doesn't really matter that much. It's entirely up to you what you want to build. Most of the time, I'd probably just get like a Deathbringer, to be honest, or a utility item, like I said. Um, and the Deathbringer, honestly, the, the, the cooldowns back on the Malicious Deathbringer is pretty nice. Um, I will say that much. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy watching the video. I pretty much build these exact items on uh, these auto attack warriors. Like Equinox is obviously new, but this is pretty much my build that I would go on Erlong every single game. The only difference is if you're against the magical or not, and also like the order of which you buy the items and not so much um, which items you buy, but the order, right? Uh, so I appreciate you guys for clicking on the video. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.